Hey guys, it's Jack Punkington. So I wanted to talk about uh, reverb a little bit and just do like a little vlog. Um, reverb, when I got the Randall in the mail, the box it came in was actually damaged. Um, if you've seen the unboxing video, when I open it, it doesn't have a power cord or a foot switch. And the foot switch I could understand. The power cord is what kind of really bugged me because you're gonna sell an amp, why wouldn't you sell it without a power cord? But I, I had messaged the seller and we had worked it out. Um, the box actually was ripped open uh, and big enough slot for the foot switch and the power cable to probably come out in shipping. Um, it looks like something had fallen on top of it. Luckily the amp works great. I love it. It's probably my new favorite amp. Um, I have to go say thanks to my friend Mike Bowman, um, who's like, he kept pushing me to buy it. He's like, you gotta check this out, it's perfect, you're gonna love it. I love Randall in the aspect of that I love the um, RH100 or 200 I had, and I love my Randall so much that I'm actually selling the Jet City to Mike. Um, he likes Marshalls, and it's a very Marshall sounding amp, just a little punchier with a little bit more darkness darkness to it, whatever, dark sounding. So I'm selling it to him today, yeah. And I'm actually selling the Micro Terror tomorrow. I'm trading it back for Neptune, and if any of you guys have been on the channel long enough to remember Neptune, it was a blue Les Paul that I bought at my local pawn shop, and it was like the mystery guitar. We had no idea what it is because it doesn't have Davison on the headstock, we just couldn't figure out what it is. It's a Davison Les Paul Custom, which is like their ripoff. And it's actually a really cool guitar. So I'm getting, I'm trading straight trade for it. And what I'm going to be buying is with the money from this, I'm buying either, I haven't set my mind on it yet. I'm thinking a dark micro terror. Um, I like the cabinet, cabinet simulation. I want to play around with that effects loop. I don't understand effects loop a whole lot and I want to learn it. This one does have one, but it might just be easier to work with on that and for recording. Um, my other option is a um, Fender Super Champ X2. A lot of people have told me to check that out. It looks really cool. It's 15 watts. And then my other option is a RH100. Randall head and I was really tempted to get it because I missed my RH200 that was the best solid state amp head I've ever owned in my life counting the fender that's across the room um so yeah little side note guitar center step up your game I have to just say that um I like guitar center I've got friends who actually work in the one that's nearest to me but the reason why is because I was looking up used dark micro terrors to see how much it would cost to get it shipped to my house and stuff. Um, a used dark micro terror shipped to my house is $211. A brand new dark micro terror shipped to my house from Sweetwater is $189. So that makes like no sense at all. So look into that guitar center. <laughs> it's whatever I get. You have to pay for shipping and stuff, but bleh. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, I'm going to be doing, hopefully, if I can work all of this out, recordings from the Randall XLR output. I was testing it out finally last night, and it sounds awesome. Um, a lot of people are like, for recording, you shouldn't use it. Uh, cabinet simulations don't really sound the best, and I agree with a lot of it. Like, the one from the Dark Mirror Terror is eh, it's okay. And the one from the 6505 is eh, okay. But this one sounds really good. I really liked it. I was able to get some really usable tones. I was really enjoying it when I was just playing it. Um, my problem is all of my guitar stuff is in my living room. Or dining room, technically. Um, and with three other roommates that sleep and live around me, I can't play super loud sometimes when I want to, due to work schedules, and that's why I bought the Micro Terror. Um, 
but with that XLR output into my interface, into my laptop, it sounds perfect. I could not believe just all the tones I was getting, I was able to rock out really well. So just another little ping for this amp that they did right. Randall, you make amazing amps. Thank you so much. Um, this is not paid or anything. Not a sponsored video. But, Randall, if you want to send me some more stuff. <laughs> some more. If you want to send me stuff. I'm joking. But it's great amp. Um, I also wanted to give a tip to any guitar players that are like getting into gigging and playing live shows. Now... Um, let me state this by if you can only afford whatever you can afford, I completely understand. But I highly, highly recommend that you get a 212 for gigging. Um, 412 is like, that's what everyone wants to look at, or that's what everyone likes. Get a f 212 and make it so it's you can either have it horizontal or vertical. This one can do both. I mean, all you have to do is put foots, feet on the bottom. That's it. Um, but this takes up way less room with a 45 watt amp head. It's like a really good gigging situation. Like the amp head, the 212, and my pedal board and one guitar take up all of my back space or my entire back seat in my car. I don't have to put anything in my truck. So it's really cool. So check that out. <laughs> Just wanted to do a fun vlog. Hopefully my reverb pedal will be here by tomorrow. I'm a little nervous because I did buy it off eBay. But I heard TC Hall of Fame um, is a really good reverb pedal. So we'll see. So, hope you guys like the video. Jack Punkington, signing out. Peace, guys.